Shalom and welcome with Pindranovsky. To hear now another prophetic word I received from Yeshua through his Holy Spirit in the third month on the day 30, around 6.30 in the evening uh, p.m. in the year 2023 of the Gregorian counting. So I received it while cooking. Mm. Not the greatest place for me because my cooking is already bad enough. So the distraction of that word could cause some risk of burnt food, which luckily didn't happen. However, before you listen, ask the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you through this word to give you wisdom and deeper understanding. Now, also again, keep in mind that when it speaks about I, me, my, mine, it's not that goofball here sitting on the couch, but Yeshua through his Holy Spirit. But I'm jumping now into the word and I'm reading. Forever. Forever is forever. Some people say forever is era, age, epoch, cycle or such things. But when I say forever, I mean forever because I am forever. I never change and I am, I am for all eternity. Humans in their narrow minds can't imagine eternity. Those with a depraved mind can't even imagine tomorrow. This is simply beyond their capacity in this fallen world. When I say generation after generation, it is what it is. This generation is the last generation in this corrupt world. And then the term generation as you know it will cease to exist. The new heaven is forever and hell is forever. Those who don't repent before their last breath will find their eternal rewards in hell. The flames of the fire will be the only dim source of light. Regardless what crime, I will forgive all and everything if you come to me and ask for forgiveness and turn from your crooked ways. The way of righteousness is before you. Noah and Abraham and many others walked it faithfully till the very end. If you desire that, you can do it too. Though Avraham not really enjoyed to leave this world when I called him home. Like for Lot, he negotiated about his transition. Surrounded with relative young children of his second wife, he pleaded for a long time until I've made it clear it is time to enter into his rest in me. Don't quarrel trying to hold on to the world when it's time for you to come home. You can't imagine how beautiful real life in my kingdom looks like. Only those who have defiled themselves with the mark of the beast or worship his image and those who mingled with the Nephilim I can't save. They surely would like to hold on to the world as long as possible because apart from me, Eternity is worse than anything known in this world. Life is in the blood, and if the blood is defiled with the blood of the fallen ones, there is no way to enter my kingdom forever, never, ever. When the Israelites were commanded to kill everything that has breath in the land that was promised to them as an inheritance, it was not because I am a cruel God but I wanted to protect my children so that they will not defile their seed with a seed of corruption that will pull them away from me to follow other gods. But the result of their disobedience is what you see in society, in the face of the children of Israel, defiled, unable to live in love, peace and joy of the Holy Spirit together and in harmony with each other. If you, O Israel, would have only kept my commandments I gave you through my servant Moshe, if you would not have added and removed so much to my word, but kept my simple and pure commandments, my people Israel, 
you would be a jewel between and to all nations, and the whole world would desire to live like you and receive the blessing that comes by keeping my commandments. I gave you first my commandments, but they are also for all people, tongues, tribes, and nations. Whether Jew or Gentile, my word is for all the same. Because I do not change, so my word and my love for my creation, those created in my image. But here's the but. The but. The people called by my name ran away from me and followed other gods. And these are the same gods that the heathen worship, where I hate abominable things that have no life but the spirit of death is in them. Your festivals, new moons, Shabbatot are disgusting to me. You say, I keep your mitzvot. But I say, no, you neglect the widow and the poor. You follow man-made traditions instead my Shabbat and my appointed festivals and my mitzvot. I have given you for a remembrance of my love for all people. When I showed you how Shabbat is made for man and healed and delivered the people on that holy day, you yelled, claimed, this is not lawful. You even don't tear toilet paper on Shabbat, but you tear those apart who want to worship me on Shabbat or any other day in spirit and in truth. But only because they don't recite your rabbi's book, you think you are permitted to yell at them? You hypocrites, haven't it heard and read how the prophet spoke about you and warned you over and over? A stiff neck and hard-hardened people praise me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. Don't cry if judgment falls upon you as no other nation. Yes, Babylon will fall in one hour. But you praise her for all her sorceries and follow her witchcraft. How much longer shall I watch how you drift further and further away from my truth? Have you forgotten or do you not know that I have called you to bring my word, to carry my word from Jerusalem to all the four corners of the earth? Which word have you preached? To the Jews first, but not to the Gentiles? The word of religious nonsense you can keep for yourself, but don't share them with anyone else. I want your obedience and not your man-made sacrifices. Yet I will give some of you a similar experience as I gave to Rav Shaul, Paul, on his way to Damascus, and see what you will do with it. No, you will not go to Damascus, because soon it will be a heap of rubble. But as like the saying that many roads lead to Rome, I have an individual way for each one of you. While you look upon disasters in this world, my light shall shine upon those of you who are willing to go like Shaul to the nations. Yes, to the nations close and far to the ends of the earth not by teaching them your man-made laws, but to carry my light and truth to dark places where I reveal myself as the light of the world. The cross will be renewed in its original shape and meaning where I was glorified in victory. Your blood will be shed that my blood can save many. My bride, I will take a remnant I will keep for the time of trials that is about to come upon the whole world. The world hates you as they hate me, but be of good courage, because I who lives in you have overcome this world, and so you. I will visit many murders before they get chopped into pieces like animals in a butchery. Yet with joy they will stand like a rock in the storm. Their persecutors will be perplexed by the peace and joy and my testimony as an urgent wake-up call for them to repent as a last chance 
to save their soul if they are still redeemable. Do you hear the train coming? If you remain standing like in apathy, on the rail tracks of system obedience, once the train is coming in high speed, passing over you, you will realize it is basically impossible to remain standing. Two choices you have, it's yours. If you don't move away, you will only continue by following the beast system. Once you are on the ride, it will get very hard to jump off and it could be fatal. There are no more stations, no more stops until the final end. You can decide to go off or change and reverse your direction. I have not created you as a puppet without a free will, but as a free person in this world. But let it be known to you, the next train is the last. And if you don't get off now and remain on the system tracks, your journey will end up in destruction. Forever you will regret of neglecting all the voices of warnings. Then forever the world, failed repentance, will pound in your ears and heart. Too late, too late. The cry for mercy will fade into desperation into your eternal suicide. The suicide is not to repent and not to invite me into your heart, to save your soul and be born again in the spirit. My commandments are forever, as they are my words. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words remain forever, forever, because I am forever, the same yesterday, today, and forever. One day, soon, in a twinkling of an eye, you will know what forever means. It's planted in each and every soul. Only by my blood it can be released into eternal reality of true life. Remember the worm that never dies. He never dies, but he is death. Also with that, the human brain can't grasp how death can't die. Those unrepentant worshippers of evil will, one day, look into death very warm, into the eye and understand. Too late, too late, it will be, once there. And then they wish they had bowed before me instead before the image of the beast. They wish they have been called fools for the cross and carried it all the way to the top of the hill in exceeding joy of their salvation, while their floods of tears have washed my feet and the feet of their neighbor. Tears like as floods of repentance that run down the valley of decision to fill the lake of grace and mercy to a level where the ark of my covenant can carry their soul to the crystal sea in my kingdom. On the other side, their unrepented wicked enemies are heading straight on their speedboat towards the lake of fire. Science religion believe in so and so many years the sun will lose its power and finally stop to shine or slowly decrease and dim. And of course the number of the years depends on which sect of science they, they are in. But everybody think it's extremely far away in the future in terms of humanistic ideology. These deceived fools know nothing about the sun and how I created all details. By my eternal word, the sun shines and one day I will command the sun to be darkened while the moon will turn into blood. Hear the shout of the coming of the great and glorious day. A little more sword, famine, pestilence, here and there, a cluster of false teachers and prophets, and it will be all as foretold. Not because I desire people to perish, but because they turned their backs on me. The remnant who love me with all their heart, soul and mind will be under the shelter of my wings. People count years, weeks, days and hours where they don't know what it is. 
Even when my coming is only days or hours away, they're still going to be eating, drinking, until they are drunk, marrying and giving into marriage to everything they desire. Without wisdom and understanding, they will continue their routine and don't expect me to come into their lives in an unexpected moment. Nations perish for their lack of knowledge and wisdom. Where will you be when this will come? Look into the mirror and examine yourself. You will not see anything but the vapor, a smoke that rises and vanishes. If you let me examine you, I will show you great things you never knew. I will show you all the deepest chambers of your heart and all what's in there. Most people are scared to death if someone else will expose their deepest thoughts because they are afraid it might be used against them in a negative way. So huge locks behind massive security doors protect its entry. And yes, one day if they don't open their hearts voluntarily before me, it will charge against themselves. If you have even lost the keys to some of the hidden secrets, don't worry, because repentance of forgotten sins give me permission to access. There I will open the doors and clean out all the filth and rubbish. Though I have the general keys to all hearts down to the deepest and most hidden places, I will not forcibly enter and come in as long as breath is in your lungs. Yet I will not hold any sin against you in my final judgment if you bring them to me at the foot of the cross voluntarily where I carried all sins. But if you have the keys to your transgressions and give, it, give me no permission to enter one day, yes, one day, when your flesh starts to rot, I will open these doors and there before my throne you have to give account and you will be remembered of every big or small and tiny thing you tried to hide. You can hide many or even most things before men. And they will not know. Yet with coming technology, they also will be able to retrieve it to some extent and might use it against you. And if you stand before them claiming you're one of mine, they will scan your memory if there is something else they can find against you. Though their heart scanning technology works like the flawed PCR test with many false results, regardless if positive or negative. But it will determine the charges against you. If you will deny my name before them, they might drop any charges against you. But I will remember everything that once was in your heart and it will not be pleasing for you. If you confess my name before them, and they may not scan your heart, but I promise you to take care of the rest in every detail, and the Holy Spirit will guide you what to say. Make sure your connection to Him is solid. I don't need technology to see your heart. I use perfect love. And that is 100% accurate, always. I know all your deeds more detailed than you yourself. If your sins are washed in my precious blood by your forgiveness and repentance, they even never existed in the first place. Even if your brain claims to remember these sins, I will not remember them because they simply don't exist in my loving sight anymore. Don't get deceived if your sins are forgiven to believe they still exist. But also the other way around. All the sins that exist and swept under the rug of lies and deception by false teaching, claiming they are not sins. My word alone is the reference of what is sin and what is not. And my word never change nor can't be translated into humanism. My words are forever true. And when I say forever, I mean forever. Make sure you get to know my word. Whether you are a great or a miserable student, there is no difference in the understanding if my Holy Spirit teaches you. 
you will not have forever time to repent. Either you come today to trust and obey my eternal word, or you will know what forever on fire means if you resist to accept me for the salvation of your soul. I am serious about it. The hour is late. Wake up, wake up before it's too late. Things that have been will be no more and things that will come will last forever. All right, that was the word. Again, quite long. And because of that, I don't talk so much around it. Uh, you can read the transcript if you want to go slowly and prayerfully through it all again. And the link is provided, actually. At the end, make sure your relationship with Yeshua is honest and true and deep and strong. So maybe you're a great student with a brain that can remember a lot of scriptures and where to find them. Uh, but don't worry if you're a miserable student like this goofball here on the couch who walks with the Lord even since over 40 years but knows only a very little of his word and needs to look up always everything in the concordance. Luckily we have some access to that, where to find it. Uh, I looked it up in Romans 10, 16. It says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of a Messiah. It doesn't say faith comes by studying the word. It helps to remember if you can. And if you have, but if you have ears to hear, listen what the spirit of Adonai tells you. Also to make the disclaimer of my knowledge and prophecies are in part and Yeshua's words are complete. So as we're now on the season of Pesach, so at the end of this video, I want to send blessing to all of you. And according to Yeshua's advice, the blessing is also for those who persecute, persecute me or any of the, my brethren who are somewhere scattered all over the face of the earth. Shalom, shalom.